How much does it cost to adopt a greyhound? Who can resist the 40 mile an hour couch potato? The word is out about what great pets greyhounds make, but how much does it cost to obtain one of these dogs? For a purebred dog, not as much as you'd think. The average greyhound adoption fee for a retired racing greyhound is between $300 and $500. Expect to pay an additional $100 to $200 if the dog is younger than two years, has tested cat friendly, or has been imported from another country. On the other hand, you're likely to be charged less by $1 or $200 for a senior greyhound or a special needs greyhound. And if you find that interesting, stick around for the details, including adoption fees, what you get for that fee, and what you'll need to buy up front, and the average cost per year to keep your new best friend healthy and happy. If you're enjoying this video as much as Lily seems to be, please subscribe to my channel so I can let you know right away when I make a new video. As a bonus for subscribing, you'll also know when I've posted a new article over at my website, greyhoundhomecare.com. This is all fresh new content and it's all about better living with your pet greyhound. Adoption fees. Of course we adopt greyhounds because they're absolutely adorable, but the fact is, you're getting quite a bargain when you choose a greyhound over a purebred dog from a breeder. Greyhounds are only a fraction of the cost. Why? The most obvious reason is you're not getting a puppy. My only regret in having greyhounds is that I miss their puppyhood. If you bought a young sapling greyhound, on the other hand, ready to embark, <laughs> awful pun, sorry, on his racing career, you'd pay several times that. Another reason is, they're not bred to be pets. I know that's hard for some people to hear, but that's the truth. Greyhounds are purpose-bred dogs. I read someplace that the fact that they adapt so perfectly to being pets is just another testament to their easygoing nature. Greyhound adoption programs are the ultimate win-win. The original owner of a fine dog is ready to add up-and-coming racers, and you're ready to add a loving pal to your home to share the next decade of your life. What may come as the greatest surprise is that the adoption agency pays double or triple what they're charging you to get your dog ready for you to take home. The difference in the cost is paid for by gracious donors and often includes generous donations from the owners of the racers themselves. The cost would be even higher if it wasn't for volunteers who tend to the dogs, vets who donate their skills, and in some programs, professional racing trainers who give their time after a long day of hard work to feed yet more dogs to yet another turnout and expertly tend to all those little things that a dog may need. What's included? A full vet checkup. A veterinarian often donating his time will give your greyhound a full workup before you take him home. It certainly does make it much easier knowing where things stand right from day one. Spaying or neutering. This weeds out prospective adopters who really only want to adopt greyhounds to breed and sell. Required shots. In many areas, some shots, such as rabies, are required by law, so it's good that this is taken care of ahead of time for you. A collar with tags. In addition to the rabies certification tag, you usually get a tag listing the adoption agency's phone number in case your greyhound gets loose before you can get a tag with your own phone number and address on it. The collar is typically a martingale style collar. Usually provided with the collar is a matching six foot leash. Parasite treatment. Your greyhound will come to you dewormed, hopefully, and free flea. <laughs> and flea free. Dental cleaning. Racing greyhounds are notorious for having not the best teeth, especially older dogs. While some trainers take care of their dog's teeth, some don't. During the dental treatment, your greyhound will be sedated so the vet can give those choppers a good scrub, removing any tartar buildup. Follow-up support. If you have any questions or issues concerning your new pet, experienced volunteers are just a phone call away and always eager to share their experience with you. Any existing records. When I got my first two greyhounds, I received only the information from the vet workup. With Lily, however, I got all of her records, including this nifty ID certificate, which identifies her by the color of every toenail. It's kind of the greyhound version of a set of fingerprints. These things are sometimes included. Microchip. Smart racing owners get the dogs chipped right from the start. Other times, this may be done by the adoption program. Dental work. Not to be confused with dental cleaning. While your greyhound is anesthetized, getting fixed, and having his teeth cleaned, some vets will extract any problem teeth and clean up their gums, while others will only clean and scale the teeth. Muzzle. 
This is a good thing to have and comes in handy when you least expect it. If you have to take a car-hating sick dog to the vet, for example, it's nice to not have to worry about getting bitten while you're trying to stuff 70 pounds of stubborn into your car. It also comes in handy if you go visiting to a home with smaller pets, or if someone brings a small pet to your house, or if you get invited to hang out with some other greyhounds, especially those that your greyhound is not familiar with. A coat. Now you probably are going to end up with a few of these, so it's great if your greyhound starts out with at least one. My other greyhounds were kind of fluffy, but Lily is very thin coated. I put at least a light coat on her any time it drops below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. House training. I was so spoiled. My first greyhound was house trained. She'd been bounced back to the adoption kennel from a home where she uh, didn't relate well to the cat. But she was house trained. My next two came right from the adoption kennel, so that was more of a challenge. You might want to add a Bissell carpet cleaner to your shopping list. Here are the things that you have to buy before your greyhound comes home. Heartworm meds. Ivermectin for those of you who are in mosquito populated areas. Flea and tick treatment. Sometimes you can get these at a good discount from your adoption group. They are expensive, but they work great. Use the prescription kind, the other kinds I've had no luck with. I swear, between this and the heartworm meds, you'll have very little trouble, if any, with parasites of any kind. I've noticed that if I slide on these meds, my greyhound's tail starts to get a little mangy. No, it's not that the meds grow hair, but I think there might be some microscopic parasite at work there, which gets killed off by the meds. Large dog bed. Now for these next few things, you may have hand-me-downs from another dog, and that'll really cut your costs. I think my new greyhounds have always felt hand-me-downs very comforting, because they're getting stuff that's all nice and broken in. It makes them feel welcome and at home. Blanket or blankets. A blanket and a quilt are great for your greyhound's nesting instincts. You may have old ones around the house again that you can pass on to him. Mine likes to have one to lay on, and another to paw into a ball and use as a pillow or cuddle tightly under her chest. I always keep a third one around to cover the dog on a cold night. They really appreciate that, and it's a good way to bond with your new dog, but always approach your sleeping greyhound with caution. A thin fleece blanket makes a nice cover. A good way to save money on these is to buy fleece fabric at any store that sells fabric by the yard. I just saw this fabric on walmart.com for an unheard of $3.25 a yard. Two yards of this would make a dandy little greyhound cover for about $8. And because of the nature of this particular kind of fabric, there's no sewing involved. As soon as they cut the piece, it's ready for you to use. A quilt. Your greyhound will have different uses for a quilt than he does for his blankets. He'll roll the quilt into a bolster, which is especially nice and cozy in a crate. He may even hide stuff in it. Most of all, he'll enjoy digging at it and pushing it around his bed. This will save you some serious wear and tear on that expensive bed as he scratches at it with those talons of his. <laughs> Nobody can shred a bed like a greyhound. Crate. This is for the 48-inch wire crate with two doors. Do not get the plastic shell type of crate. Those are foreign to greyhounds, and they can sometimes panic in them. Stick with the kind he's used to. A big bag of food. This is what I pay, but it can go higher or lower depending on what you use. A feeding station with bowls. This is a healthier way for your greyhound to eat. Greyhounds digest better with raised feeding, saving you on vet bills, and from having to listen to a lot of concerning gagging and coughing from your pet. Plus, once you have one of these, it lasts forever. It's a one-time purchase. Cookies, the best way to make fast friends with your new greyhound. Toothbrush. A soft children's toothbrush. I cannot stress enough the importance of keeping your greyhound's teeth brushed. And I'll tell you something, this will reduce your vet bills dramatically. Your dog will be happier, he won't be knocking you over with his breath, and best of all, it's likely going to give you more years with your buddy. You'll never regret this investment of your time and dollar. Toothpaste. Full disclosure here. After the first tube of designer chicken-flavored toothpaste, I switched to people toothpaste for my greyhounds. Whatever risk is incurred in using fluoride toothpaste is more than compensated for by the sparkling good health of a dog with a clean mouth. I use a very small amount, about half the size of a pea, and that's half the amount recommended for a child under the age of six. At our last home, the water was even treated with fluoride, so they were getting it anyway. My greyhounds enjoyed 12 and almost 15 years, respectively, of excellent health, so the fluoride couldn't have been too bad for them, right? 
toy. Your Greyhound will be thrilled with a cute stuffed toy of his very own. They really do love them. If you're concerned about it getting shredded, just buy something that doesn't look too lifelike. So how much does it cost to maintain your Greyhound per year? The expenses in this part are comparable to, or really even less than, for any large dog, but here it is anyway for your reference. So you'll see on the chart, the bulk of your expenses are going to be the basic medical stuff and food. So I put vet bills under $500, that's an, in an uneventful year. Of course, you never know what's going to happen with a pet, but if you follow the tips in my Greyhound home care videos, you will definitely save a lot of money on vet bills just by keeping him healthier and a lot of stress on yourself as well. So you have your heartworm meds, your flea and tick treatment, and then your food. Now here you see the dog bed inner replacement pad, $20. You're probably thinking, what kind of pad could you get for $20? What I do is I buy an egg crate style, king sized foam mattress topper for people, and I cut it into fours. So one of those king size pads only costs about $80. Once I cut it into fours, that's $20 a pad. I replace it once a year, and I have pads for the next four years. Then you have your cookies, Toothbrush, yes, replace that toothbrush once a year, at least. And toothpaste, one dollar. This is the price for Pepsodent. With the little amount I use, that tube lasts a long time. And a new toy every year, you know, a little something for his birthday. So tell me, when are you bringing home your pet greyhound? Leave me a comment or a question. If you're a seasoned greyhound owner, please share the benefit of your experience with prospective greyhound adopters and add in the comments what these things cost in your neck of the woods. I just published a massive resource for you over at greyhoundhomecare.com all about what foods are bad for your greyhound. Ever notice how they always say, don't feed them this, don't feed them that, but they never tell you why. I did a deep dig on the exact problems with each of 40 foods and ingredients. And no, I'm not the earthy, crunchy, mega organic type of person. We're talking about stuff that's in your fridge and cabinets right now. Thanks for watching. See you next time on the Greyhound Home Care channel.